In the last video, we looked at this climate dataset. This graph has monthly average temperatures in Cambridge on the y-axis, plotted as a function of time t. We looked at a periodic model, and in the last video, we saw that a periodic pattern can be expressed with a linear model with the formula shown here. The grey line in the plot shows the fitted model's predictions. Then we tried adding a secular term, plus gamma t, to the model to allow the model to express the idea that temperatures are gradually changing, and we got the estimate gamma hat is 0 0.0354 degrees C of warming per year. We added in this plus gamma t term because we had an a priori idea that it might be interesting because climate change is a topic of great general interest. But suppose we lived in a bubble and we never read any news and someone fed us data as CSV files and asked us to analyse it, how could we discover that it's worth adding this term? Here's the way I'd suggest. Let's suppose we've fitted a model. Let's say y is the response vector and the dot 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 here is an array with all of the model's feature vectors as usual. First, compute the residuals from the model. The residuals are the difference between the actual response vector y and what the model predicts. Next, just plot the residuals, epsilon, every which way you can think of, plot it against all the predictive variables you can think of. If there's a systematic pattern to the residuals, if they depend on certain predictive variables in some way that you can see, then just add those features to describe the pattern and refit your model. And then repeat and keep going until there's nothing more you can think of. Here's what this procedure looks like for the climate data set. We'll start with our first guess, the periodic model. Here I've written it in the explicit form with residuals and an equal sign. Next, plot the residuals. Here I'm plotting them against time. I've already got time in my original model. I've already decided that time is an interesting predictor variable. And this plot is just for checking if the time dependency features in my original model are good enough. I could, of course, plot the residuals against any other possible predictor variable in my data set. It's just in this data set here, there aren't any other useful predictor variables for me to plot against. Okay, so I plotted the residuals against time. By eye, it does look to me like there's a trend. I'm hard pressed to tell if it's a linear trend or maybe something that flattens off, but it looks like the 1980s were definitely a bit cooler than this past decade. So as a first guess, let's investigate a linear trend. Here, I've drawn by eye roughly what the trend might be, and I've written down the generic formula for it. Epsilon is roughly delta plus gamma times t. So let's just add this to our model. Our revised model is just what we had before, plus gamma t. I don't need the delta term because I've amalgamated it with the original alpha and I'm calling the new parameter alpha prime. So that's the procedure for diagnosing problems with the model. You might be wondering, can you just keep on doing this? And if you can keep doing it, why not just program a computer to add every possible feature in every possible combination? There are a couple of reasons. First, you don't just want to investigate how the residuals depend on one feature at a time. Maybe there's intersectionality. Maybe they depend on the interaction between two predictors. That's actually what we were studying when we looked at one hot coding in the last video. We proposed a model where the response variable petal length depended on two predictor variables simultaneously, depended on both species and sepal length. It wasn't just a add a species feature and add a sepal length feature into our model. That would have given us parallel slopes, in fact. We needed to have per-species slopes, so that depended on the interaction between those two features. So, for every predictor you have, you might want to explore how the residuals depend on that predictor crossed with any other predictor, and so on. The number of possible features grows exponentially in the number of predictor variables. There's a more conceptual reason not to just keep bunging in more and more features. That's called overfitting. Basically, if you bung in too many features, then you'll end up with a bad model. We saw this before when we looked at the iris data and we saw that adding in lots and lots of polynomial terms gives us a model which fits the data we have very nicely indeed, but which produces stupid answers where we don't have data. We'll talk a lot more about overfitting in part three of this course. 
For now, I'll just give some general guidance. If there's a feature that you, as an investigator, have reasonable grounds for believing might be relevant, then add it in. Don't program a generic crawl through the data. Limit yourself to what your background knowledge tells you is plausible. That will keep you safe from overfitting.